Hey, welcome back to the world's messiest workbench. I want to show you guys a few things about how easy this FPV stuff really is. When I first got into it, um, it was pretty baffling, you know, and I found that for me the most important thing was having a good friend that really knows what he's doing. <laughs> he taught me all this stuff. In fact, most of the components I got from my FPV guru, I'm going to check with him and see if it's okay to just go ahead and name him, but uh, most of you guys probably already know who he is. Um, anyway, there's a couple things on this system that, that I wanted to show you. One of the first things, if you're going to get into uh, FPV or just extensively wiring your tanks, you're going to want to get a good JST kit, a good set of crimpers. Now these are only about 15 bucks from Hobby King. Just got to catch them when they're in stock, but they work great um, because with these red JST connectors, everything is crimp. Nothing is soldered. There's no soldering with these, so that makes it easier. But I'm just using a cheap 60-watt solder iron from the hobby shop. I think I paid about 8 bucks for it, and that does all the soldering that I needed to do. I had to solder wires on both ends of this board and both ends of this board, and I had to solder together the wires for the connectors. Okay, so basically there's about four different components here. You've got your camera, You've got your transmitter, which includes the antenna, and you can see that I've added a fan on here. This little board right here, let me see if I can zoom in so you can see that well. Okay, these two little boards right here. This is a filter, all right, this one here. All it does is uh, um, filter the power source so that you won't get electronic interference in your transmitter, okay? Uh, now, this board here, this is a voltage regulator, and it's very, very easy to use. Um, all you need is a voltmeter, and in some cases, you don't even need the voltmeter. Uh, what I've got here is this is a 12-volt battery, okay, but it's a 12-volt transmitter pack that I use for my Turnigy 9X and 9XR Pro radios. So I've got a couple extras of these, so I decided to just use one. It's only a 1.5C. But that's okay because you're not going to have a huge amperage draw on this like you would on an electric motor. So one of the problems I had is that the transmitter runs off of 12 volts and my fan is a 5 volt fan. Now I can hook it up at a straight 12 volts and it'll run, but it screams like a banshee and just runs like crazy. And I didn't want that. So another thing that I did with the JST is I, I hooked up an on-off switch. This is just, that's all this is, right? This part right here in between the battery and the rest, this is just an on-off switch with JSD connectors on it, okay? So, now these things only go in one way, so you can't plug them in wrong. So I plug in the switch on one side to the, uh, to, the, to the components, and on the other side to the battery. Okay, so now, if, I don't know if it'll show up or not, but if, when I turn this switch on, this fan will start turning. Might be able to hear it. I turn it off, okay? Now, the great thing about this little board is you can take a small screwdriver and right here, you can adjust the voltage. So let me turn it on and show you what I mean. I'm not sure how well this will show up on video, but I'll be quiet and you'll be able to hear. And I'm hoping you could hear that. But the other way to do it is you simply take a voltmeter We've got positive on this side, negative on this side. You just touch there. Okay, now I'm showing 4.59 volts. Now I can turn this down by turning it counterclockwise. Or excuse me, I, counterclockwise is up. There's 6 volts. 7 volts. I'm running this fan right about 5 trying to get it exactly dialed in is kind of difficult, but you don't need to be exact. If you're within 0 0.01 or 0 0.05, there's 4.98. Okay, 5.1 volts. Now that's going to be fine for my fan. All right, no problem there. And because of the Y I have hooked in here, I've still got a solid 12 volts going to my transmitter. Let me turn on the screen. Get it up here so maybe you guys can see the screen. Okay, you just saw the screen turned on. Hear all the noise. Alright, now I'm going to plug in. I'm going to turn off the fan. Turned off the power of the whole system. 
I'm going to plug in my power wire to my transmitter. Now when I turn this on, the fan will come on and the transmitter will come on and the screen will start showing the picture. Okay, so there's the fan is running. And now the screen is showing the picture from the FPV camera. You can see as I move the camera around a little bit, it moves on the screen. Okay. So these systems are really fairly simple once you get just a little bit familiar with them. I mean, there's not really that much to them. I didn't really need the voltage regulator board because I may not have needed the fan, but I put the fan on because a friend of mine told me that these transmitters can run a little bit hot. So I figured, well, better safe than sorry. I took the fan off of an old Taijian uh, MFU that wasn't any good anymore. I had an MFU that cooked on me, and, and I don't ever throw those things away because those boards are full of good stuff. There's resistors on there that you can use in your light systems. You can pull the JST plugs off of there and reuse them. There's capacitors that can be reused. And the fan. The fan came off really easily. It just pops apart off the top. And uh, now I was able to use nylon standoffs and styrene. Let me get you a good uh, zoom on this item. Show you what I've got there. Now I'm just using nylon standoffs and styrene plastic for a base plate. And you can see that the, the nylon standoffs come from the base plate and hold the transmitter board. And then I got another set of standoffs on top of that that hold the tr uh, fan in place. Now the fan doesn't quite exactly line up with the board, but it lines up with two screws and that's enough to hold this in place. You can see here's my dipole antenna. Let me back off a little bit so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Here's my dipole antenna right here. And that hooks into the transmitter. Like I said, the only soldering I really had to do was on the wires uh, that go to the camera. I had to buy the plug for the transmitter board and then attach those to my camera wires. But it's really easy to do because the board is marked on the back what everything is. If it's uh, video in, um, if it's power in, audio in, it's all marked on the back. And then the instructions that come with the little $10 mini cam, they tell you that... Uh, yellow is audio, red is positive, black is ground. There's also a white wire, excuse me, yellow is video. I said audio, that was a mistake. Yellow is video. There's a white wire on here that's for audio, but I've got that clipped because I'm not using the microphone on the camera. I'm going to use the microphone on the board, which is probably a bad move because now i got that fan on there. You probably won't be able to hear anything. But it only comes out through the speaker on the screen, so I'm, I'm not really worried about that. This is mainly about visual. This is to give me visual reference for where those paintballs are going to go, and that's pretty much the whole purpose. So if you want to get into FPV, it's really, really easy. The, uh, the main expense that you're going to have is your screen. Now, you can go with goggles, which I did at first, and that was about 100 bucks for the kit, and that came with the goggles and with the, uh, with the receiver. I have that set up right here. And this is a little bit different setup. This is, this is the goggles. You can see that at the front, you can see there's the screen right there that you look at from the other side. This camera is so that you can use this switch to go back and forth from the camera that's on the tank to the camera that's on the front of the goggles. That way you can see where you're at and what you're doing without having to take off the goggles. And for those of you like me that wear glasses, that's a big advantage. Okay, then there's the receiver that came with the screen. This will pick up just about an E5.8. And like I say, the uh, position switch for which camera you use. And then you got all your power wires that goes over here. This is my main power wire coming in. The battery sits in this little pocket right here. And this uses a 7.4 battery, just like what goes in your tank. This whole system is 7.4. All right, and this will pick up my uh, Mobius camera. And it will also pick up the camera that's attached to this transmitter. Now, if you aren't that interested in the goggles and you want to mount something on your camera or if you want to try and make your own goggles or whatever, I think this is the screen to go with. This is the little pilot. I believe it's from a company called Hawkeye. And uh, it's about 80 bucks. Hawkeye Little Pilot. It's about 80 bucks from, uh, I think I got it from, I can't remember if I got it from Hobby King. Yeah, Hobby King I did. I was about to say Banggood, but no, I got it from Hobby King. So it's about 80 bucks for this. And this is a screen and a receiver totally built in. It's, it's all in one unit. This has everything in it that the goggles has except for the extra camera and the switch for it because with this you don't really need the extra camera. 
it charges, it's got a built-in battery, it charges with any telephone charger, any 5-volt phone charger with a mini USB, or is it micro, but the flat USB will go in there and charge it up no problem. It's got a light that's on, when it reaches full charge, the light comes off. Easiest little screen to, to use that I've ever seen. All you gotta do is just turn it on, this one should bring up the picture almost immediately because the camera is still turned on. And there's your picture. And then you can use the buttons on the side. If you're not getting a picture, you can use the buttons on the side to search for the transmitter frequency. And you can also use this screen to pick up other people's transmissions. Let's say you're at Danville and you're not participating in a battle, but one of the tanks on the field is using FPV. Okay, This will pick up his signal and you'll be able to see what he sees. And the whole screen comes with the bracket and the antenna is about 80 bucks. Once you've got that, you can add FPV to any tank that you want for probably like under $30. The transmitter board's about 20 bucks and the camera's about 10 bucks. Now you will want the filter and I'm not sure on prices or where to get the filters and the voltage regulators. I gotta check with my guy and see where he got them for me. All right, now I'm gonna turn the whole system off with the switch. Then I shut off the screen. And like I say, it's the Hawkeye Little Pilot. It comes with the uh, bracket that attaches to your transmitter. It'll attach to any regular wire trans or wire handle transmitter. On the I-10, I actually had to remove the black plastic padding that was on there, but that was no problem. Two screws and it popped right off. So the bracket, this bracket, would also very, very easily hold a, hold a cell phone. So there was a guy who was thinking about using. A cell phone for FPV. Well, that bracket would hold the phone, uh, but I don't know if you can get the bracket separately. So anyway, that's pretty much FPV in a nutshell. It's not really as difficult as I first thought it was going to be, and now it's just a question of mounting the camera in the tank. And for that, I have uh, I've, I've gotten a start. I don't know how much you'll be able to see here, but I've gotten a start on on building a little bracket out of styrene for the. For the camera. All right, and when that's done, that'll mount the camera on the front of the Hetzer. I'm also planning on making this in such a way that the camera is easily removable. I'm going to use those clear uh, gelatinous poster squares from 3M. Those stick really good. They don't leave any residue behind. They don't hurt my paint or anything like that. So I'll be able to use that and stick this camera anywhere on the front of the tank that I want it. I'm going to line it up directly underneath the gun barrel. And then when not in use, I, I can just pull it off, unplug the camera right here, and set it off to the side. Now I do plan to tease the wires out of here and then add some shrink tubing along this entire length just to protect those wires from any rubbing they might do as the tank bounces along or whatever. Uh, you also want to remember on your cameras that it'll have a little microphone on one side. That has to point down. To give you correct uh, orientation on your camera if you don't if you turn it upside down like that then what you see on the screen is going to be upside down we don't want that <laughs> so that's uh and i don't know if there's any way to reverse that at the camera as far as i know there's not you simply have to orient the camera in the first uh, correct position when you first put it in so you can see now i think that fpv is not really that difficult i set up this whole system with my crimpers and my jst kit and I really only had to solder about seven connections. There were four on this board and four on this board. But I used this, uh, I used this multi-core, uh, five-core solder. And with this stuff, it's made for electronics and it melts very easily. You basically just tin your wire with this, put it in there, and you might need a little bit more solder. But you basically just touch the uh, iron to there and it'll all flow together. It was no problem. Everything soldered together really easily. Oh wait, I made 10 connections because I also had to solder the JST connector. These JST connectors, the now this is actually the male. Even though it looks like it should be the female uh, because of the way they plug together, this plugs into this one. So I would think that it would be the male, but that's not the case. You can see that this one has holes in it and this one has pins. So they refer to this connector as the male and this connector as the female. Now your males have to be soldered, the females are crimped. So there's a little more soldering work with the white JSTs than with the red, but it's really not bad. And soldering is something that, you know, if you 
practice a little bit with it, it's, it's not really that difficult. With the solder that they've got today and the boards that they've got today, like I say, you just barely touch the tip of the iron to what you're heating and the solder will melt and flow and then you just give it a half a second to cool and you're good to go. So as you can see, FPE is not that difficult. I'm using a battery that I would already had from my transmitter pack because it is 12 volt. It's very easy to put in uh, a voltage regulator to turn that up and down just with a little screwdriver and a multimeter. I can set my voltage exactly where I want it. And the filter is always a good idea for any FPV transmitter. You want to filter in between your power supply and your transmitter board. I also have a filter like this on my goggles. Uh, excuse me, not on my goggles. I have a filter like this on my uh, Mobius, uh, Mobius cam the one that has the docking station. I've got a filter in between the battery supply and the Mobius docking station. Um, this will give you better performance at range. So anyway, you know, like I said, pretty simple. A few connectors with crimpers, a few connections with solder. Uh, everything was very easy to sort out. These kind of boards are very clearly marked on the back. It's got a big arrow that shows you the direction of the flow of, of electricity coming from the battery through the board and out the other side. So it says in positive, in negative, out negative, out positive. Everything is clearly marked. Same thing on the, uh, on the board, quite clearly marked, okay? There's voltage in on this side and ground. On this side, you've got ground and voltage out. Everything's clearly marked, easy to use. Um, my little multimeter from Craftsman only cost me about 20 bucks. I would say in the whole FPV system, probably got maybe $130 if you include the battery. And that's not bad to put FPV in a tank. And the most of that was the 80 bucks for the screen, you know. So, sorry this video got a little bit long, but there's a little bit on FPV. And hopefully that'll bring some other guys into this aspect of the hobby. Because I think FPV can be really, really entertaining. <laughs> we'll see you next time.